Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. You know, throughout my formative years of using Lightroom Classic, the only tools I had available to me if I wanted to do any local adjustments were a brush and a linear gradient. Now, after a while, Adobe added a radial gradient as well. And my workflow was relatively simple in those days. I would do global adjustments first, and then I would do local adjustments later. Usually on an image like this, I would do global adjustments, then I'd add a linear gradient for the sky, and I was done. Well, what became a game changer was when Adobe started introducing AI into Lightroom. When they did, we stopped calling local adjustments, the brush, linear gradient, radial gradient, local adjustments, and we started calling those types of adjustments masking. And with this new masking, I've really had to rethink my workflow. And what I found is I could get my best edit when I do most of my editing using masking or local adjustments if you prefer, as opposed to doing a lot of editing globally. For example, I have this image here. And what I would do first is it's a little crooked and it looks like the bench is falling backwards and maybe the trees are falling backwards a little bit. So I will go to the transform tab and I'll just click auto and that will take care of both of those issues right away. Then what I'll do is I'll do a very simple global adjustment. For me, when I like to do my editing, I'd like to have like the image a little flatter. So I start out with a flat image. Now, right now, the land part of the image is a lot darker than what the sky is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take care of that by going to the basic tab and just I'm going to open up shadows to kind of make it a little more equalized. Now, I reintroduce contrast selectively using masking. I like to work from the top down. You don't have to though. You could work from the bottom up or you could just jump around if that's more convenient. So I'll just go to the masking tools here and I'll click on sky and I have a perfect now mask for the sky. I'll go to effects and I'm going to add a little dehaze. I like to work these sliders from the bottom up, add some clarity, add some texture. I'll go to tone and I'm going to push whites up a little bit and blacks down a little bit. Maybe even push shadows down a little bit like that. So I'm adding, adding a little more drama in the sky by introducing the contrast that I want. So it looks better there. Next, I want to do something with the grasses. Now, recently, Adobe added landscape masking. And this really is what prompted me to do this video. Because with the new landscape masking, I could do specific adjustments to specific parts of the image exclusive of everything else and then you'll end up getting a better edit when you do that so i'm going to go to create new mask and we're going to go to landscape and what will happen is ai will examine the image and find different things that are in the scene there's not much here there's sky you could hover over it you'll see i already did that adjustment there's vegetation this is anything that's a plant basically we'll have this highlight and then natural ground this is anything on the ground you can see that that um, edit probably isn't quite as good or that mask I should say isn't quite as good it's kind of missing some around the tree but you could add and subtract from this mask like anything else but let's just go to vegetation first and we're going to create that mask and then what I want to do is I want to go to point color and we're going to get this eyedropper and I'm going to point on a brighter green area here what I like to do is I like to kind of introduce contrast a little color contrast I make the uh, brighter greens a little brighter and the darker greens a little darker so I'm going to go to luminance shift and I'll shift that to the right then we're going to get the eyedropper again and I'm going to click on one of the darker greens like right maybe there and then we're going to make this darker so you can see how I could get some kind of tonal variance in the grasses by just doing these two simple adjustments now Typically, I don't like to sharpen the sky, so I think I want to sharpen, though, the grasses. So I will go to Detail, and I will add some sharpness. I could also go to Effects, too, and I could add some texture as well. Some clarity, maybe even. I think that looks pretty good. Now, I like to finish things off with a vignette. That, of course, is a global adjustment, so I'll go to Effects, and I'll just add a darker vignette like that in there. And you see how fast that edit was. Uh, there's before, there's after, there's before, there's after. I did that while talking and trying to, you know, 
think of what I wanted to say. Whereas if I was just doing this edit, I could do it in less than a minute. Now, as I mentioned, it it's really comes in handy, especially when you have a more complex image. Like here I have the sculpture, I have a building behind it, I have the reflection of the sculpture, I have a tree and I have sky. Well, same thing. I'll just what I want to do globally here is just kind of even things out, make it a little flatter. So I'm going to open up shadows like quite a bit. And may, do I want to bring highlights? No, I don't even need to do that. I just want to open up shadows. And then I'm going to going to go to masking from here and we'll click on sky. We'll get our sky mask. And again, I'm going to reintroduce or introduce some drama here by going to effects, moving dehaze to the right, clarity to the right, texture to the right. And maybe with tone, I'll take shadows down a little bit. And maybe even blacks down a little bit. And whites, don't want to do that. I think whites will pull down. Or right around there is good. So uh, now I want to add a new mask for the subject of this image, which is the sculpture. So we'll click on Create New Mask. And we'll click Select Subject. And you could see that it selected the subject. It over-selected a little bit. It got a bit of this... A pillar that's on the building. So I'm going to subtract from this with a brush. And uh, I think a regular old brush with feathering relatively low. We'll come in here and just remove it from the building. I'll just do it very quickly. Like that. Now with this, I want to add some texture. So we'll go to Effects and we'll add Texture. And some clarity as well. It kind of makes it look cool. Go to Tone. I think I want to make it a little brighter overall. But maybe make the blacks a little darker. Maybe a little brighter up here. Yeah, something like that. I think that looks pretty good. And, you know, overall, I'm kind of satisfied with it the way it is. But I could come in and see what the landscape mask will select. It should select some of those grasses down there. There's not a lot here. We have the natural ground, which is the grasses. The vegetation, it's getting the tree, the reflection of the tree, at least part of the reflection of the tree, the architecture, and the sky. So let's go to this um, architecture and create the mask. And I think here I want to make the architecture a little brighter. And we'll again go to effects and we'll add some dehaze, tiny bit, a little bit of clarity, and a little bit of texture there as well. And then we'll finish it off with that global adjustment that's in effects, which is the vignette. So there's before and there's after. Before, after. That was a little more difficult of an edit, and I still did it relatively quickly because really the masking. Although it might seem like it would take you longer because you're going to be doing adjustments for very specific things. So individual adjustments for various things that are in the scene, for instance, the sky, the sculpture, the building, it actually goes very quickly. Uh, so, um, and also I should add, it's not just for like landscape or travel type shots. You could do it with wildlife. I mean, anything uh, for this image You'll notice it's kind of flat already. Uh, there's nothing that's really, as the other two images, real dark in the image that I need to brighten up. Or conversely, there's nothing that's super bright that I need to make uh, lighter. So I'll just jump right to masking here, and we'll go to the subject. And it should find the hawk, and it did. I'll go to effects first. Uh, even, you know, dehaze is kind of meant for haze. I like to use it sometimes on other things too. It's kind of like a contrast on steroids. So you can see what it does. We'll go to Tone here. I don't know if I want to try. I usually don't like using the contrast control itself. I prefer to go to like whites and blacks. So will make the whites a little whiter, blacks a little darker. I think we'll go to color and we'll add a little saturation. Then I'm going to add one more mask, which is the background, which will be everything except the bird. And we'll go to Tone. And I'm just going to make that a little darker. And then I'm going to go, I forgot to do one thing with the uh, the actual hawk. So I'm going to go back to that ask. And what we're going to do is go to detail and we're going to add some sharpness there. And finally, I'm going to finish this off as I usually do is I'll put that darker vignette by going to effects and adding the darker vignette. 
So there's before, and there's after, before, after. And again, it's just so fast. It's just a much uh, more efficient way of doing an edit. And you get really a better edit overall, in my opinion, uh, than you would if you did most of your adjustments globally and then sprinkled in some local adjustments like we used to do in the old days when all we had was that linear gradient and brush and later a radial gradient. But as you can see, I think it works great. It's making me rethink my workflow. And if uh, you are kind of married to the past, you might want to consider uh, changing and adopting something new that works for you, taking advantage of the new AI tools that are in Lightroom. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.